Hello, hello. Mic check one, two. Actually, it looks a little quiet. Test again. Okay, I think it's fine. If it's not, I'm sure somebody will let me know. Gosh, my squeaky chair. My goodness. All right, guys. Whether I'm prepared or not, it's time to start the stream, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Come on, game. Please load. I'm, I'm counting on you to load. Please do not crash right before the start of a live stream. That would be super embarrassing. All right, we made it. We made it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games live stream where I am your host and your guide and your servant through all things Everspace 2, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Today, we are gonna be covering a couple of different little details. The first thing that we are gonna crack open is going to be a little discussion, a little conversation, if you will, about the hotfix that we recently launched. We're also going to be discussing uh, a couple of details pertaining to the road to 1.0. We're not doing any like teasers. I don't want to. I don't want you guys to have the wrong expectation there. But I do want to let you in a little bit on like where we're at, where our focus is, the importance of feedback, which is very much still valid. And, you know, that kind of general stuff. Then we're going to be going into Cato Palace, which are right outside here. We're going to be doing that side mission. I'm going to be doing a Rift 400 Legacy Lunacy uh, run. And then we'll have screenshots to follow. That's, that's on the docket for today. That is how we are bringing it to fruition. So thank you, everybody, who's uh, sneaking on in here. I see a lot of people uh, saying hello, welcome. I, I appreciate that so much. Just a little little hello there when you're popping in. That's a very generous thing to do. Thank you for doing that. It, sincerely, that means a lot. Very cool. Very awesome indeed. So let's get into a, let's get into a little talk. So the very first thing that we are going to be discussing here is the hotfix that launched. And I want to talk a little bit on that. I've had a couple of conversations because of DMs, a couple forum posts. There's been a number of little things that have come up and I feel like it just needs to be addressed here. This hotfix, it's it's the last, it's the last one. It's, we're, we're done. That's it. Complete. Everything's final. And there's no more plans for any major updates from now until full release. 
the hotfix that we were able to push out, it was not planned. I think there might have been a little bit of confusion uh, about what that drop looked like, why we dropped it. We never have an expectation where we like need to do a hotfix. Like that's a hotfix is supplied because it is needed for game breaking somethings occurring. And uh, look at all these terrible drivers. So <clears throat> when we applied this hotfix, it was not something where we were like, oh yeah, well, we didn't have enough time to plug in these details that we really wanted for the patch. The hotfix namely went after those memory leaks. We had several reports from you guys about the item menus where your computer was just like getting full bodied into submission and the game would ultimately crash or the game would be unplayable. That's unacceptable. We can't, uh, we can't do that. We, we can't do that. We're not gonna have the last patch that we make to the game before 1.0 unplayable for a decent number of players. And technically it would be unplayable for every single player if they reproduced the steps to get the memory leak accordingly. So yeah, it had to go. That's the main reason why the hot fix was applied, okay? In addition to that, there were a number of other elements to the hot fix. Because after the patch was applied, we were already taking feedback in from users from the experimental, of course, but also from the live update itself, because we were able to expand to our other audiences, uh, more audiences, I should say, to uh, hear what they had to say uh, and digest the problem areas of the game, right? So through that process, we were able to push a couple little balancing changes in the hotfix as well, okay? We were able to uh, kind of make a couple subtle adjustments to our liking just to like tweak it up a bit further. None of the changes that were applied were anything dire. No like overarching massive restructurings of, of you know, backend systems or anything like that. Everything from the hotfix, hot fix, and you can see it in the patch notes, it was addressing like a couple little balance changes here and there. But primarily, again, it was that uh, memory leak that was the big reason why we had to push that out, okay? So from here on out, there are, again, there's no plans for a major update. There's no plans for any further hotfixes. But this starts going into where you are rather important in our process of development. Because from here on out, we will be discussing, we'll be sharing little tidbits of information on our journey to full release. Your feedback with your game space, like what you have access to right now, we're still receiving that. What we have now is only just like what, a week's worth, a couple of weeks worth of feedback pertaining to the latest update. We know that's gonna continue to develop. We know there's gonna be more bugs. We're not clueless to that. And we very, very much desire those of you who want to take the dive into the game to continue supplying this information, what you find, how the game feels, all of that stuff. All that stuff, because it's very important for our process of early access to bring this game together, to highlight our vision, and to ensure that you guys are truly enjoying what we're offering. Okay, there's a lot there. There's a lot there, we know it. And there's still, frankly speaking, there's still a lot more to come as well. Um, you know, and, and take that statement with a grain of salt because, you know, development is wild, it's crazy. We got big plans though. And we hope that you're excited to see more of what we are going to uh, cultivate for you. So on that front, let's talk a little bit about what that may or may not look like. Just a little, just a little. I'm not gonna reveal all the secrets, nay I say to thee. But I do think it's important to note, like here at Rockfish, we have put our focus towards the missions as of right now. That means everything that will conclude the story. 
The story so far that's listed here, basically this will be done by 1.0 release. No question about that. The story will be 100% finalized. So I wanna make sure you guys understand that. Through that process, of course, you know, with your observations at level 25 in the game experience and sort of balancing that out, all of that is in the pipe, will not be changed. We also wanna bring forth a couple of other elements maybe you guys don't know about. I've seen this question starting to come up more frequently than not, and just, you know, so you know, we are fully planning to have achievements. We're fully planning to have uh, like the tra trading cards in Steam, you know, the fun stuff that's over there. And there might be more, because like with Everspace One, if you look at what we did on that front, we did also have a couple of emojis. We also had some background wallpapers. It's possible that we go that direction as well. So when the game hits 1.0, that's when you're gonna see all of those additional features that's plugged in there. Um, and uh, should, be, should be a nice, fun little time. There will also be a number of backer related objects added incorporated into the game <clears throat> by 1.0 as well. So for all of our backers out there who have been a part of a creative reward, we will be reaching out with you, to you, we'll be reaching out to you uh, fairly soonish, likely at the start of next year, you'll receive an email. So make sure that you're checking your spam just to make sure something from like Kickstarter or from Rockfish Games doesn't just get locked behind and you miss it uh, because we will need you to fill out your ideas, what your concept is for that backing tier that you had supplied, that you supported us with. In addition to that, of course, we're gonna see a couple of new unique things come out of that through our community from our backers. And, uh, there's, there's a lot there already. We're also gonna be making the announcement about our console informations, either by the end of this year or the beginning of next. It's gonna be somewhere in that territory-ish. Um, I know that's been a point of conversation. It's kind of been, uh, you know, it, it's kind of been cycled backwards a tad. And uh, we do really appreciate your guys' patience on that, especially those of you who, you know, you really wanna play this on your favorite console, right? So. Thank you for your patience as we've been ironing out the details of the whole game experience and how it needs to come together so that we can also attempt, we really want to do a 1.0 release across all platforms. That's what we are aiming for. If we can do that, we're going to. So we'll see. I can't guarantee it will happen, but there's a lot of information on that front that we will be handing off uh, in the very near future pertaining to like what consoles we're planning to aim for, uh, what that timeline's gonna look like in comparison to the PC, all of that type of stuff. So again, really do appreciate your guys' patience on that front, because it's been, uh, you know, <laughs> it's been a point of conversation that keeps kind of like, woo. Oh, and Michael said it's specifically coming in January. So thank you for, thank you for that. Uh, just touch up details. So it won't be end of month, it will be beginning of January. And uh, yeah, so lots, lots of stuff on this front, guys. Lots of stuff. Whew. <laughs> Man. Also, <clears throat> just a complete, complete side note, completely irrelevant to everything else. I, I sincerely am awestruck just completely by the builds that I've seen come out of the game. Like the, the, some of the, like, gosh, just the, the level of skill and perfection you guys have to grind out the best gear. You'll like do 30 rifts for one legendary. Oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. You're also crazy. Uh, but man, holy crap. It is very cool to see you guys pushing the limits of what we're offering because through that, you're also helping us figure out some of the kinks in the mix. 
In some cases, we're able to make some of those builds even better, and sometimes we have to fix an exploit. <laughs> so thank you, sincerely, for truly going ham. Um, there's there's a number of you, and several of you are in this chat right now, like, absolute chef's kiss to your dedication, to your skill and ability. It really does help us a ton. We only have a number of players on the team who've been able to complete Lunacy 1000. <laughs> Woo. And it's supposed to be an incredibly hard challenge, right? Like that's that's the point. Uh, hopefully, you guys do realize that Lunacy 500 is uh, it's it's honestly the like the truly is like the max you should have to go, especially for the uh, the casual players out there. Um, shoot, for casual players, you could probably do the most justice at like 200. Uh, but uh, regardless. Just want to say all of those wonderful things for th that style of feedback, for that great amount of care and skill. As we just continue to move forward into all of these things, 1.0 home stretch, right? 1.0 home stretch. So it's very good. I just looked over and I do see a question I want to answer right now because I think this also goes into like the whole backers that we you know touched on. Um, I see a question pertaining to uh, the Everspace 2 release party. So that information will also be coming down the line. I don't think that's going to be something uh, spoken about this January. That's probably going to be closer to uh, the 1.0 release itself. Uh, you know, maybe a, a month in advance or so. But I'm gonna let Michael take care of that process because <laughs> we want to make sure you you all have plenty of time, of course, to get on that. So as soon as we are able to slap that information down, we will reach out to you accordingly. So that's just gonna be a process of emails being sent out, but um, it has not been sent out yet. That information has not been sent out yet. All right, I think that covers all of those particular details. Uh, the only last thing that I do want to just kind of touch on, and most of you guys are going to know this already because you're smart. Like I've had conversations with you. I've seen a lot of you guys in the chat, uh, but just to make it super duper abundantly clear, you know, the hot fix that we established again, that was done because it was necessary so that we didn't bar certain members of the player base from being able to play the game. Okay. That would suck if we had no further updates where you literally couldn't participate. That's the intent behind the hotfix. A hotfix looks very different from an update because the update is truly adding a bunch of new content, right? That's adding a lot of that delicious, meaty enjoyment of new ships or enemies or items or side missions or all that type of stuff. That's what comes in like a full blown patch. And we have no more major update patches between now and full release. So I almost want you guys to like, say it with me. <laughs> Cause I want to make sure everybody has heard me. I don't want to see a single person ask this question on the discord. And if somebody's asking it right now, uh, that's clever, but I hate you. Uh, <laughs> but no more planned updates between now and full release. We will still be providing you with a lot of information as to the journey onward. We'll still have teasers. We'll still have highlights to have in these streams. So yeah, I really want to bring that home point. Really? I want to, re I really want to bring that home point. I really want to bring that point home. Whew. Too much talking already in the stream. Hey, give me some gameplay. I think that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and cut to the next segment of the stream where I want to cover this whole talent acquisition side mission. So generally speaking, whenever we have an update, we like to cover a lot of the new content thereof through the course of these streams. So those who either don't play the game or maybe are struggling with part of the game, they can see it if they want to. We just want to put it out there. Uh, obviously we're going into spoiler territory, but uh, you knew that to begin with. So we're gonna start this side mission and we're gonna go through the whole thing. Welcome back, Mr. Rosnin. 
Mr. Cato would like a moment of your time, if you'll wait just a moment. So long as I don't have to deal with that jar. Tell Uncle Kane, I've got it, toots. So I did some favors from the job board. What's next? Hey, now, no need to get testy. I've good news for you. Mr. Cato is pleased with your recent work. Why can't he tell me himself? He doesn't have time to personally deal with every hotshot who floats our way. But he has asked for you to handle something that requires a little more discretion and compensates correspondingly. I'm listening. A simple task. Retrieval of a valuable asset. What is it? Not it. She. Codename Clockwork, and the best damn safe cracker in the business. Okay, so when you say discretion, you obviously want this asset to remain on the hush. Obviously. But we got word the Okar authorities are interested in her whereabouts. She poached from the wrong dirty aliens. She's been hiding out, but our sources say they're getting close. Don't you have a way to warn her? She shut down long-range comms to avoid detection. I'm not so sure I want to start messing with the other authorities. It's an in and out job. If you're fast enough, you should get there before them. We need you because your ship ain't tied to our organization. I hope I don't regret this. At the first sign of trouble, I'll bail. It won't come to that. Like I said, in and out. Uh-huh. All right. So we got this a nice little start to Kato Palace. Now we have actually, technically... Kato's minion is hardly a reliable source. You believe you can undertake this operation without the Okar discovering you? Like he said. In and out. Let's find this code name clockwork and make the extraction. Excellent. So, some of you guys who have frequented the stream excessively, you will know that we have technically done this part of the mission in the stream, but I wanted to start it from the very beginning and do it all the way to the end and one whole chunk, or at least in one stream, uh, because after this first mission, we'll probably jump over to any questions that you guys have asked. For those who don't know this process, in these development streams, we love to answer your questions. We absolutely wanna make sure that you are taken care of. So if you've got one, you should ask ask right away and during certain segments of the stream i will pop in and directly answer them now i'm not sure uh i can answer every single one of the incredibly insane questions that can sometimes occur but i will do my absolute best i know things i know a great many things and it serves us at rockfish to make sure you know what our vision looks like and the expectation that we should have together so that way you're not diving into a product that you don't know where it's supposed to be going or you think it's something that it's not. So it's very much a win-win for both of us. You have questions, just shoot them into the chat. Who would have thought? We're actually on time. No sign of the arc. Better make haste before the current state changes. All right. I did a little tidying up my ship. I, I quite like it today. Me? I was sent by the family. Who is this? Do I know you? Not yet. I was sent by Kato. Well, honestly, it was that jackass Daryl. Jackass? Then you clearly don't know Daryl. Look, we don't have the time to discuss Daryl's characteristics right now. The Ankara are about to arrive. The Ankara? Why were the Ankara? With our given authority, a female human individual is to surrender and hand it out without resistance. You weren't lying. Why would I? Daryl, on the other hand, promised me an easy in and out. I guess I can forget about that. I sure as hell don't want to end up in a knockout dungeon. Hi. Block our ship's signature. The Akra mustn't be able to track what is about to happen. This will be the right time to consider speaking. Too much talking. Need more shooting. Excellent. Excellent. I think that's all of them. For now, 
there'd be more. I'm getting the hell out of here. A little gratitude would be nice. I've put my neck on the line for you. I'll be sure to thank Daryl when I see him. Charming. Excellent. Adam, I must, yet again, apologize for my nephew. Is it true he sent you off on another one-way mission? It's all taken care of. I think there's something between him and this clockwork. Oh, this was about her? Yeah, there's a spark of interest going on there. At least the boy has an interest. I'll need proper payment for this, Kato. I jeopardized my standing with the Ark. I'll see you right. The important thing is that everyone is safe. We could always use a true jet like you. Do some more favors for us and we'll watch your back. I'll check in on the job board when I get the chance. Excellent. So that's the first start to the Kato mission. Now from here, when we dock back at Prescott Starbase at the Kato Palace itself, they need us to do a couple of jobs for them to kind of like build up the trust a little bit further because this is the talent acquisition phase, right? It says so in the name of the side mission. However, to save time, uh, I am gonna make sure that we uh, can jump ahead accordingly and uh, get this mission chain underway. So I'm kind of bypassing some jobs here just to cut to the chase. Uh, but I will be doing a couple of jobs at the very least. Oh, this is the, I need to choose the second one, whoops. Um, because we did add a slew of new jobs. We did a little bit of a balancing pass on the jobs as well. Nothing crazy, uh, but some of the XP gains, some of the, um, the items that you get, they were adjusted so that we're not doing anything uh, too crazy with your gains through jobs. We also made sure that jobs now are at a cap of 25, level 25. Time you showed your face again. Hi, Daryl. I suppose I should thank you getting clockwork out of that mess. You should. But will you? You must have a soft spot. You went right over your uncle's head for her. That's none of your beeswax. Besides, I can't have a broad cramp in my style. As if you have style to cramp. Look. Daryl, I'm a busy guy. What is it you want? We have an access code for the central database at Tarko Ordered Control which can prove very valuable to us. This access code, I take it that's what Clockwork stole, which brought the Akra down on her. You're catching on. If we could see the database, we could track and divert any shipment in the system. We want to remove some undesirable competition from the picture to cripple their supply networks. You get me? So what is it you're asking me to do? I'd like you to assist Clockwork in cracking this database. You just need to get close enough to transmit the access code. She'll do the rest. You on board, or not? Will there be trouble waiting for me on the other end again? It'll be in and out. That's what you said last time. I'll think about it. I'll make it worth your while. Promise. Excellent. So. This would be after we've accomplished several jobs for uh, Kato Palace. And now this is our second mission that we're doing for Daryl Hero. Fly on out. Sending you again? Why can't he go himself? Yeah, I wonder why. I don't know why I'm doing this, to be honest. Like all the other mercs for the grids, I imagine. I'm Adam. By the way, I don't care. So Texas speech, just just in case anybody's wondering, Texas speech is also one of those elements that we are adjusting for a 1.0 release. We want to have full voice work in English and German for 1.0. That actually reminds me of a question that we had somewhat recently, where um, the German localization, the German voice work. We actually had it in the experimental branch. That was unintentional. So for those of you guys who heard that dialogue in German, please note that that was very much not finalized and could change radically. So yeah, just keep that in mind. We absolutely will have both English and German full dubbing at 1.0.
All right. Let's get into this mission. After we're done with this one, we'll go into answering those questions. So if you haven't asked a question you want to ask yet, get on it. Five, mark the terminal we need to access. May I remind you that by associating with these people, you further risk exposure to the Okar authorities. I am uncertain as to how much longer we can keep your activities concealed. Go ahead and remind me all you want. I'm carrying this through. Besides, I'm kind of curious about what Daryl and Clockwork are up to. Undoubtedly something underhanded in which they are playing you for a stooge. I think there's something more to it. Is the audio level for the game high enough, guys? Do, you, do we need to boost that a little? Just, just out of curiosity. Just out of curiosity. Otherwise, we're going to keep with this pathway. We got to gain some files or something, I guess. Hey, Clockwork, I'm uploading code. Okay, let's see what we can get. So, am I done here? Ah, uh, scrap. Don't think so. Stop, right there. You do not have the required permission for this access. Are you kidding me? We've set off the alarm. Yeah, I can see that. I got incoming, all around me. Give me a minute. I'll shut it up. You do that. I'm just gonna be here trying to stay alive. Excellent. Security chips, like the kind that just got blown up all around me. Hey, you're not as dumb as Daryl said you were. All right, so let's go grab these access codes. What do you think? Hi, is this any good? This is a high security mainframe component. It may contain sensitive information. Sounds like it might. Hey, Clockwork, I got something. Transmit it my way. I'll see what I can extrapolate. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, I have codes. We are still on track. Patch it through. Hi. Mark the terminal that matches the code's identification number. Already done. This is too easy. Alright. One more terminal to go. Probably. <laughs> All right. Uploading code to the security terminal now. Hold it. You do not have the required permission for this access. Oh, give me a break. Another alarm? Excellent. Ah. All right. Let's go ahead and take out this group of not really enemies, but not really good guys either. That is loud. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Area is clear, and I'm in one piece. And I have full access to the star code for the control database. A cake walk. Easy for you to say. Anyway, mind telling me what the hell that was all about? 
They must change the codes every now and again, so the first didn't work. Not my problem. No, my problem. So why did the second alarm go off? I did that to cover for the actual hack. Now that the second attack was simulated, the security code is still valid. Anyway, you fret too much. Bad for your health. See you around. You're bad for my health. <gasps> uh, she's gone. Got him! Alright. Mr. Roslin, I am pleased to inform you of new listings on the job board for your consideration. Thanks, Marianne. I'll check in when I get the chance. Excellent. So that is the conclusion of talent acquisition. Now we have quite a bit more trust with the Kato clan. And uh, yeah, we have a new mission chain that's now available called Same Day Delivery. And here we'll need to finish four jobs for them. And then we'll have access to the next one. So we will continue this after a round of questions. Geekbyte, are you there with me? I am indeed. Good evening, Excellent. everyone. How are you all? Right, we've got a nice view lined up for you. Oof. But good, good round number of ten. It's always a nice one. Excellent. Excellent. So we will start off over on YouTube. Bearded Frog has asked, "Will there be an experimental release for 1.0, as in prior to 1.0 release, like every other update has had?" That is a fantastic question that I know that we've spoken about internally, and there is not a decision on this yet. So, it could happen, but I don't think it's very likely. I personally don't think it's very likely. And so I don't think you guys should have the expectation that we will be doing an experimental branch for 1.0, because this is going to be the finalized completed project. If it has game breaking issues, if it has bugs galore for some reason, we will then hot fix accordingly. We will then provide, a, you know, an, an update, even a full blown update uh, accordingly. And also you guys know that we have plans for, you know, a free DLC after the 1.0 release. So even if for some crazy reason there were still lasting effects beyond that, we would still tidy up the game space accordingly. Um, and so my suspicions were correct. Michael says there is no experimental release for 1.0. So, so thank you for just like punching that down, Michael. I know we, I know we discussed it in the past, Michael. Uh, but yeah, wasn't wasn't sure if there was a reach conclusion. But yeah, no experimental release, no experimental release. Well, that sounds. At least we know where we stand with that one. Absolutely. Um, Fred Speck vet over on YouTube. Everybody's been asking on YouTube, Twitch, okay. come on, you need to up your game here. You need right. to up your game. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's quite a good one because I actually enjoyed Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Um, is the name Dax Bashar, is it a wink towards the characters of Dax and Bashir from Deep, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine? Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to pull my super secret behind the scenes information. I uh, I have no idea. But that is an incredibly clever observation. Yeah. I'm just going just gonna to look. We do like our references uh, in the game. That's for freaking sure. Uh, I'm sure you guys have found a number of them uh, floating about. I'm not seeing a direct reference. But uh, yeah, I'd have to ask the guilty party who's established this name. <laughs> and I, I, I simply don't know. Uh, I don't know, now you mentioned that, I have a hunch that there was some influence, but, <laughs> but I can't confirm. I can't confirm, unfortunately. That's a clever question though. It's a clever question. Okay. It's very good. Uh, right, sticking with YouTube, uh, Thunderflame is asking, will there be some level balancing for the main campaign with how it is now optional content feels quite mandatory if you don't want to deal with enemies seven levels above you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, this goes into that whole territory of like the feedback is still relevant right now. You know, we supplied this hotfix. We've been getting good feedbacks from that point. Like this update, I mean, for all intents and purposes, like we just released this, right? And we have a long ways to go. I shouldn't say long ways. It's actually not that long. It's actually 
It's actually pretty short. <laughs> um, we're in the home stretch to 1.0, right? And through this process, we're going to be chugging away at everything we possibly can, even this rather expansive behind the scenes rework of level progression, right? Like this was this was not a small change. This has adjusted a lot of key features internally. It's kind of like it shifted the foundation to a degree and we have to address that. Uh, we are very thrilled with the change thus far. We do know that there are a couple of you guys who really don't like it at all. And you know what, that's fine. We aren't trying to please every single person in the history of the world. We know that's impossible, but we do wanna make the game right. We wanna get it ironed out and straightened away according to our desires according to your desires and make that breathe and make that come together. So yeah, and pertaining to uh, locations and their levels and the mission levels and experience gains and all of that stuff, yes, there will absolutely be more adjustments on that front to ensure that the progression does feel right. It feels good. If players want to over-level themselves, they will be able to do that. If players want to challenge and be under-leveled and streamline the mission change, we want players to be able to do that. All of that stuff in between, very much still being evaluated and will be worked on, for sure. For sure. <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of ties in with a, a further question from Gilles Mercier on right. YouTube about the uh, various conversations on Steam okay. uh, about the new leveling system as well. Uh, yeah. So it isn't final. There's an, a lot of work still to be done. So. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and again, I, I do want to state that, guys, you know, like when we were evaluating how the level scaling was in operation, like this, it wasn't something where it was like, oh, yeah, a couple people don't like it. So we're going to go ahead and change this whole system. Like, earnestly, we had the idea of having static levels for locations since the ideation phase of Everspace 2. That's the concept phase of bringing it together. That was something that we initially wanted to do. Through testing, it didn't it didn't it didn't work so great. Like with just the small pockets of being able to pursue uh, what you are into. So for the early access, we very much scaled that level intentionally for that time being until an inevitable change was going to occur. At least a thoughted an inevitable change. And then, yes, we did. We made the change. We felt like it was necessary. We felt like it would be better for the game overall. So, yeah. Please, please know that. Don't think that this was like a snap decision. Oh, this person doesn't like it on the Steam forums. Let's change the whole game. That's not That's not how development works. <laughs> I want you guys think of that. Because uh, that, that's a big change. We've had this in mind for a very long time. That wrap that one up nicely. Yep. Cool. Right, Death Rex on YouTube. Uh, when will we get cockpit and the rest of the ship customization? 1.0. Yep, that's also on the list. Uh, that's the, uh, I refer to it as like the aesthetics, the aesthetic content. That's all the, uh, the stuff that isn't so much pertaining to gameplay. Like we needed to get as much gameplay as possible in your guys' hands through the early access so that you can feel the game so you can provide adequate feedback where all these like little touch-ups and niceties that's coming after right like that's now that we have completed the last update now we are working on those things well not right now right now but it's that's on the docket for 1.0 absolutely absolutely yes marvelous uh right wizard jerry uh, again on youtube uh, will there be any more Kickstarters in the future? Uh, they missed the Kickstarter for Everspace 2 and they just don't want to miss it anymore. That's that's such a hard question. Cause I mean, there, there's so many factors involved with that, right? But it's, um, that it's, it's I, I can't answer that. Like, it's not because I am bound by NDA. It's literally like, I there's no possible way to know. It's It is impossible to know if we would move in that direction or not. So we would have to, it, it would be some time for us to even be able to figure that out and then, you know, go through that process. Yeah, so I, I, I simply can't answer that one. It's a curious question, I like it, but yeah, too far out to say. Excellent. Right, uh, sticking with YouTube, uh, Finns has asked, uh, good little question this, in each ship class, there are different ship models and some are larger than others within that class. Does the difference in size matter how easy it is for enemies to hit our ship? Technically, yes. 
it does the hitboxes are different um, i think this is the it's most commonly associated with the bomber with their very wide wings versus something like a, a gunship which is a little bit more tight we have had to evaluate these hitboxes as we were developing just to make sure that it's you know mostly fair but because each of the classes does operate with uh, unique stats, uh, we are taking into consideration, believe it or not, we're taking into consideration those hitboxes as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, it's very much intended. And the smaller tiers versus the higher tiers, there are some subtle changes in that as well. So like lower tier ships, like the Cyclops here, uh, I think that the wings are just a tad tighter in with the lower tier and then they kind of get beefier the higher tier you get. So technically the hitbox does in fact uh, in Biggin <laughs> through the course of uh, the tears. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, Michael's just uh, added a little bit of clarity towards the customization and he does say that some of the extra customization features might be cut for 1.0 if we have to meet the locked in release date. Too early to say though. Right. So and yeah, and I think that's I think that's a really important thing to say. So as I have referenced the aesthetics of Everspace to uh, you know time and time and time again, there's you know there, there's a, a number of elements that need to reach fruition before that takes place, right? Because the aesthetics are those sweet, delicious things that come after the game is working as intended. So uh, I do appreciate that clarity, Michael. Um, yeah. So yeah. Very good, very good. All right, let's get a, uh, how many more questions you got? Uh, another five. Five Did more questions? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's take a <laughs> quick breather from questions, I think. And I, cause I wanna, I wanna get into a job. I wanna show one of these new jobs that we've added. Some of you guys, I don't think have seen uh, this one. And I find it to be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna go over to uh, Kato, Kato Palace, if I can remember what's it's for that one, okay. Uh, and we're gonna take on a ramen delivery job. <laughs> oh my goodness. It seems so basic, but it's actually a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I have one available, perfect. Another one of the jobs that was added is called Hitman. And we did technically do this on the stream, but just for the sake of highlighting specifically in this one, we're gonna take on both the ramen delivery and Hitman here. And you'll also notice that with these jobs, I'm always getting items. I've noticed some of you guys kind of forgot about the renown system. <laughs> Don't forget about the renown system. Whenever you max this thing out, you gain benefits through this. For all future jobs that you do, there are increases to this, right? So you have a one where it's the credits earned from jobs are increased by 25%. Jobs will always reward an item. We have renown earned from jobs is increased by 10. That gives you the little bit of a home stretch run from elite to legend. And then jobs will always reward an additional item. So you top this off, you will always guarantee you get two items from the job boards. Very, very important if you're looking for a specific item, you might just peruse through what's available at a local base and see, oh, I, it's got that one item that I've been looking for. And boom, bada bing. You don't even have to pay for it. You just get it through the job. So we are gonna do. We require you to make three deliveries using our ramen drones. If you fail to make a delivery in time, a small percentage will be deducted from your payment. Ramen drones. I bet it's not even ramen they're carrying. Please, be careful with the drones, they can be difficult to control. If one of the drones is destroyed, you will not receive any payment for that delivery. I'll do my best. I really thought I had graduated from menial tasks. Excellent. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this ramen delivery drone. So, one of the big reasons why we incorporated this mission in at the same time. is because we really like the slippery nature of inertia dampeners being toggled off. It's just a lot of fun because it makes a unique challenge to try and navigate spaces. And it's also kind of fun to just test your knowledge of Prescott Starbase to try and get this ramen delivered. So these drones are very slippery. You can't boost with them 
But the goal here is to deliver the ramen within a time period by staying inside of the designated area for like, I think it's three seconds. And you get paid more crazy for their ramen. if you're faster about it. What's really in these dollars. Okay, on to the next one. So for some of you guys, you're going to look at this and be like, oh man, this is a super easy mission. You just have to like navigate a little bit. I'm really good at that. And some of you are looking at this going, no, thank you. I hate drones. I hate slippery movement. It's not my thing, and that's it's great. That's the joy of having multiple jobs available to you guys to do, to uh, satisfy Kata's re requirements to get onto the next mission. In time. Hello. Boom. Marianne? I'm listening, Mr. Rosnick. I got that job done for you guys. That is very good, thank you. Excellent. Uh, and when that job popped up, it also said claim rewards because again, we got those two items. So uh, something to always remember, and I didn't do it for our last couple items, but whenever you complete a job, you do not instantaneously collect those rewards. This is due to, well, a number of reasons, but one of them is because your cargo hold might not be ready for it, and uh, we don't wanna crash your game. So you'll need to come to the mission chain and say, hey, I wanna claim my rewards now. So we can just do that for all three of these. Now they're gone. And then we also have these two jobs remaining uh, to conclude. Uh, we have Hitman, I wanna do Hitman, because I think this one's a good one to showcase because it's a new addition to the game as well. After we are done with this one, we will jump into the uh, remaining Kato mission and top it off. Hitman, the Hitman job was something that uh, kind of harkens back to Everspace 1 a little bit uh, in two ways. One, it's going towards the element of scanning, which she did uh, a bit of in Everspace 1. And it also harkens back to the element of bounty hunting. One of the marked ships is piloted by the targeted individual. I know. I have to get close to start the scanner. So in the course of one of these missions, sometimes the ships are all close together. These guys are really far apart. How dare. But you have to get close enough for a scan, it'll start doing the scan. There's probably gonna be a sound effects that's added uh, to this in the future. That was no match, so we have to go scan one of these other ones. And we are looking for our specific target to annihilate. Scanning in progress. Just need to confirm the signature. Of, of course, it's the last one. It is not rigged to where it's always the last one, so you guys are aware. It, it is randomly applied to one of them. Just got really unlucky. I've done this before where it's like the first one I scanned was it. It's like, yes, that always feels good. But there's like legitimately no way of knowing. So you just have to, just have to try. It's also important to note that whenever you do these side missions, these Hitman side missions, it ticks off the Okar if it's in a protected location because you are taking out what are considered to be neutral targets. Kato doesn't care about that. Kato wants his jobs to get done. So there we go, taken care of. Now, from here, we technically would need to complete two more side missions, but I, just, uh, I don't wanna wait. So. This is as if we've completed all the jobs that are necessary and we're gonna to return to Kato Palace to see what's next. I need to dance more, oh my goodness. Music's too good. Well, look who it is. We need to get you a VIP pass or a frequent flyer card or something. You keep coming back for more. Hi, Daryl. Yeah, here I am, I guess. I don't know why sometimes. Well, it just happens your timing is impeccable. Let me level with you. This thing with the access codes and this hard code database me and Clockwork have been working on is all part of the bigger plan. Oh, really now? 
Yeah. And now, we're coming up to the next stage. Okay. Keep talking. Well, we took a long hard look at the shipment details we got from Tarko Border Control, and some real interesting flight plans came up. There's one shipment which is, shall we say, particularly juicy. Okay. Particularly juicy. Particularly juicy. So what is it, let me guess, fruit? Hey, smart guy. Not just an ugly face. And you want to steal this? Maybe some people might miss it. Fruits are a rare commodity in space. The people we'd be inconveniencing are bad people. Aren't you bad? Me? No. Our organization, we're dubious. The people I'm talking about, they're bar eyed And let me guess. In and out. Precisely. In and out. As always. Which, as always, is never the case. Listen, Daryl. I'm willing to be involved in your scheme if you just came out straight with me. Give me the lowdown. What's this all about? Are you trying to impress Clockwork? She seems to have taken a shine to you. Huh? What? I don't know what you're talking about. So, come on, are you in or are you in? I'll take a look. And I'll get to the bottom of this. Alright. So now we are on this mission chain to go uh, on a particularly juicy adventure to acquire some fruit, apparently, allegedly. Looks like it's you and me again. I'll be overseeing this operation. Oh boy. I bet you wish it was Daryl, though. What do you know about it? Shut your pie hole and get to the location. Oh my gosh. Now I see it. She and Daryl are a perfect match. Aren't they just? <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> Which super light's your favorite? I know I've asked this before, I'm asking it again. I kind of go back and forth. Man, I really enjoy Zarkov, but Union is popping. Mm. All right. Hi, Clockwork. I take it this is the automated freighter we're pilfering. Actually, I'll be doing the footwork this time. You keep lookout. Sure thing. Say, what's your real name anyway? TikTok. What is it to you? Just making small talk. Not like anyone is going to intercept us out here. Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> Man, I'm sit. I'm I'm impressed. By some of you guys, like you just slapped it down. And you're just like, I asked the question, Cedo, boom, Zarkov still, Drake, I see Kait, awesome, oh my gosh, it's like ever, it's like, there's no, there's no one best super light. It seems like I honestly thought I was gonna see a lot of one specific one, and you are all just bouncing around everywhere. You guys are bouncing around everywhere. I'm impressed. Docked at the freighter, codes to crack. Oh, scrap. I just set off the alarm. You? What? What did you expect? I'm boarding a freighter illegally, ain't I? Several <sighs> fighters incoming. All I right. the wrong cargo, and now you will die. I suppose I'll deal with these guys. All right. Excellent. That was too much. Oh, it's still hit! Yay! That's what I like to see. That sniper drone's not even part of this mix. Go away! <laughs> That's kind of funny. All 
right. We'll clear this guy out because we can. And one more. It's getting pretty intense out here. I'm not sure how much longer I can keep you safe. Don't you even think of leaving this freighter without me, buddy? Yeah, wouldn't think of it. But at this rate, I'm worrying about either of us leaving. Damn, that was a close one. A bit too close. Something tells me this is gonna set me up for a while. I am really doubting we went through all this trouble, or those guys put up such a defense, or banana mangoes. The contents should not concern you. You'll be paid for your services. I still have questions. Yeah, well I hear the service bots on Prescott lend a bid here for the right price. So rude. See you around, cowboy. Excellent. So that's the conclusion of this uh, little side mission. Well, like the last part of the side mission, but now we have to see the conclusion by going back to Prescott one last time. Whee! That's Eric. This is a good little uh, segue into a question that we oh, had. Sure. If you could show will, how you forward. do fast fast travel in Superlight. Yeah, sure. And how so, you actually get there. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great little question. So basically, um, you have these various challenges that you can accomplish the game space. And there are specific ones associated with every single system. When you complete these challenges for the system itself, which is mostly just like running around the system and then doing a couple like uh, uh, distress calls, high risk areas. When you complete all these tasks uh, and then fly very close to the sun, you are given the ability to boost faster in that system. So basically by you maximizing the exploration, all you're traveling to boot from that point on is going to be just faster. In order to enable this, you have to first designate a target. So while I'm just flying around like this, I cannot fast travel boost. I have to select the target by pressing F. And then you'll see right above me up here, we have that fast forward. All I have to do is hold down the shift button. And I believe that it increases the speed by two. Like it literally doubles the speed. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it's double, but it's much faster. 10 out of 10 would recommend. It's very nice. It's a good question. That's a good, good, uh, good interjection there, deep right. All right. So we are going to head on over to Kato Palace, wrap up this mission against spoilers, but you knew that already. And after we're done with this one, we'll jump right on into some more questions. Adam, there you are. Come on in, dear boy. Actually, I was hoping to see Daryl this time. He has some answering to do. Daryl is indisposed at the moment, but I can appreciate you need some kind of explanation for the missions he's been sending you on. You've got a bit hot out there, and I can't believe I went through all that for fruit. We've known each other a while now, Adam. You're like family to me, and we have cause for celebration. Champlain? I don't get it. A toast to Daryl and Clockwork. What? They've just tied the knot, shouting and arguing the whole way through the ceremony. Mind you, but the boy did good. They're, They're perfect. Cool together, ain't they? I knew there was something going on, but the raid we did on the ship. I've been hard on Daryl. I've been trying to raise him right and help him find his own way. He needed a bit of a push. So, he had to find incentive to move on up in the galaxy. I told him I'd only consent to him taking a wife if he paid the nuptials himself. I doubt Fruit would have paid for much. Nah, it was something bigger, like you suspected. Plushies. I risked my life, three times, for plushies. Hey, not just any plushies. Highly valuable collectibles, worth a fortune to hardcore space opera fans. Clockwork brought the shipment onto the station, they sold it, Daryl popped the question, and they got hitched in the casino chapel all within minutes. These youngsters move fast. Makes my head spin imagining it. That'd be the Champlain. Where'd they go on honeymoon? Upstairs. They'll be back to work in a couple of hours. Anyway, to love. To love, I guess. 
Marianne will see you out. Don't forget to check in with her for jobs every now and then. Oh, wait. I have something for you. A wedding gift. I'm feeling generous. You'll find it outside. Oh, thanks. Excellent. Excellent. And that concludes the uh, mission chain for Cato Palace. We got two that we were able to uh, go through. You're getting jobs along the way. You'll have access to some of those new ones. And uh, yeah, we're quite happy with how that's all working. We're happy that we're able to add a lot more to the mix with these jobs. Seems like the reception on that front has also been good. So yeah, there you go. So with that being taken care of, now it's time to transition into another round of questions. I know we had five that were still hanging on from before. So let's start with those, Geekbyte, if you are up for it. You certainly are. We've uh, we've expanded somewhat as well from that point on as well. So awesome. <laughs> you've got a few to answer. Uh, right, first up, uh, another good question from Finns over on YouTube. Okay. Uh, does the chance for Starforge Grade to spawn on an item depend on which specific base type item it is? E.g. armor breaker missiles is times more likely to happen than Starforged than crews. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Um, I think the only restriction that Starforged has is, at least at this time, I'm pretty sure that it has to be superior, uh, a superior tier. Um, but aside from that, no, I don't think that there's a formal restriction based on the item type. <coughs> Excuse me. Cool. That's a, that is a good question, though. That is a good question. So. All right. Right. Cool. Uh, next up, uh, Fred Speckvet. Sadly, he's had to go to work, so he will, he'll have to watch back on the VOD for this answer. <laughs> but uh, uh, since the last two updates, uh, Camera Shake is now on by default. Is there any, re any reason behind that? Uh, the, the default was off before, or at least important only. Now it's on full. Uh, Someone but, pushed a, a button, a bug happens. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so, like someone's drinking their coffee. Whoops. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, I'm not too worried about it because you can very quickly disable it. Um, like, because again, personally, I, I do not like any form of camera shaking. And, you know, I, I've said this in these streams before because I know you're all watching it. And you're like, but you have camera shaking on. Yes, it's for thematic effect through these streams. It does make it look a little bit more dynamic which is why I'm doing it here. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, I mean, hopefully I don't think that makes too much of a difference. Like if you start boosting when you start up the game and you see the camera shaking, you're just like, oh, screw that. I'm gonna go to the settings. I'm gonna change this immediately. Uh, where's the camera shake button? Right here, boom. Just, just die in a fire, boom. You know, taken care of. But as far as it being enabled to start Hopefully that doesn't make a, a huge difference to you. I don't know if there was any incentive to do that or not. It li quite literally could be a bug that happened and somebody just needs to turn it off again, or it could have been an intentional change for some reason that I don't know about. It's, yeah, yeah. Hopefully you're not too concerned. I, I certainly am not. <laughs> Marvelous. Right, Brian Brown on YouTube. Uh, is the trading shop update still on the to-do list for 1.0? Technically, yes. Um, and, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the 1.0 expectations, I think. Because, you know, on this, on this road, you know, I, I had a really good conversation actually with Hans Christian a little bit before the stream. And Hans Christian is one of like the lead developers that we have over here. And one of the things that he was kind of mentioning to me is how we still actually have quite a bit planned for the game. Okay, guys? And, and I say that not to uh, get you all excited for like, oh my gosh, the game's gonna be like twice as large as it is right now or anything like that. Cause like we have deadlines we have to satisfy, right? Like 1.0, our release date, pretty sure it's locked in place at this point. Pretty, pretty sure. Pretty sure. Michael's like, Eric, don't say that. Maybe do say that. I don't know. Whatever. It's, we're pretty sure we've got a pretty solid date uh, as of right now. Um, and through that process, through this process, everything that's on our to-do list is priority. Has to happen in order for the gameplay experiences that we've already plugged in to reach the fruition. I say that word a lot because like it has to be exactly as it was envisioned from the beginning. And we have a lot of systems that aren't there yet. 
We have a lot of systems that aren't there yet. Okay, gonna be realistic here. Are we gonna get to every single one of these systems for like that full blown, it's exactly where it needs to be 1.0? We certainly hope so. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. So we are ensuring that the elements that get done impacts the gameplay experience first and foremost. It's gonna be the content that you can dive into and enjoy. From that point, we're going into those really nice, like really desired elements, either from our team or you guys to plug those into the mix. And then from there, it moves into the, these would be really nice to have. These would be exceptional to bring into the game space if we get that added time. And there are of course also cuts that we make. There are certain elements that we thought were gonna happen and we say this is gonna take too much time for not enough of an impact in that game space. And I know that some of you guys might uh, notice some of those little things, but I can assure you it's not because we are lacking the desire to do it, it is anything but. It's because we're evaluating our workflows, because we're evaluating these deadlines. At a certain point, we have to say the game needs to be finished, right? So we're going to hit that 1.0 release date that we've got ironed out, that we're looking towards. From that point, we've already said this before, we are gonna have free DLC that comes after the game because we do know there are certain desirables that we want to bring into the game. They're not priority, but they are desired. We want to bring those into the game. So we will be offering a free DLC after the full game is launched. And then beyond that, we also have plans for premium DLC content. Now, that's kind of going beyond the stuff that we're currently working on, but, but still, I digress. So I say all of this so that you guys can kind of see where we're at, how we're moving forward. We have to hit these priority elements, right? We have to focus on that gameplay experience first. We have to get the missions, the storyline completed first. These are must haves. They will happen, guaranteed. You know, we got the, the, the achievements, right? The, the tradable cards. We got the, you know, those little additives, right? Those are also going to happen. Then beyond that, we start getting into, we really want them to, we'll see. So, whew. <laughs> it's, I, you know, it's, I really appreciate your guys' patience through this development. You guys know how transparent we've been because there's a lot on our plates. There's a lot that you've supplied. We don't wanna go down this pathway of content cre creep. We wanna hit these deadlines and that's what we're locking in for. In fact, Michael even says, yeah, pretty locked in on the 1.0 release date. There you go. So we are like, sincerely, this is the home stretch. This is the home stretch and we are going to ensure all priorities and promises are made by 1.0. If we don't get all the candy done, there's gonna be that free DLC. So, yeah. Yeah, and just a reminder for peeps that yes, Michael has said that the uh, 1.0 release date is locked in, but we're not gonna tell you, no yeah, matter how course. much you ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is the specific release date? It is, oh, let me just pull it up on my calendar here. No. <laughs> Excellent. Right, uh, back to the question on Twitch. Uh, Salayan has asked, since this is the final public update during the months coming to 1.0, will we be showing uh, more further developer branches and showcasing iterative development, or is this the final thing that we're gonna be seeing for good? We will continue doing live streams for the entire duration of development up to 1.0 and probably even beyond. I don't, I don't foresee the stream stopping. Um, and through this process, I will be receiving development updates uh, to the branch that I'm playing on. And we will be showing those and talking about those in a position to discuss and to highlight what the vision looks like for that 1.0 full release. Now, also keep in mind that through these builds that I will be showing, we are not gonna travel down the path of like the story any further from here, okay? Like we are, we are done with revealing the story. Everything that you've reached up to in the current live uh, game space that you have, that's it. That's all you get, cliffhanger, 
You will not get the rest until 1.0. You might get like a teaser of like a cutscene, perhaps, but we are not gonna deliver that story in any medium, be it a stream or otherwise, until you have it in your hands in that 1.0 release. Uh, also wanna also wanna point this out. Oh gosh, Michael, I I feel like this is <laughs> I feel like this is so like whew. ah all right. So Hans Christian as our lead uh, game designer, as as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Michael does say that he has over 700 items on his to do list uh, for right now, as of right now. And we do have varying team members that, you know, we can talk to and see if we can alleviate some of those issues from time to time. Like, you know, I've I've actually done a number of requests from Hans Christian to kind of help lighten things up. And I know other team members have as well. You know, we, we're all in this together. But a lot of those elements that are on his plate, like it's for Hans Christian's wizardry to bring to life. It's primarily his tasks. And everybody on the team's got quite the number. That's just Hans Christian. Okay, that's just Hans Christian, mind you. So, will he complete all 700 by 1.0? Wanna take some bets? Cause I, I'm betting he's not going to. No offense, Hans Christian, you're a wizard, but whew. Uh, but dang it, he's gonna get through most of them. I guarantee that. Marvelous. <laughs> right, uh, another question of back onto YouTube. Oh, I feel sorry for Hans Christian now. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> Olivia he, off. He knew what he, he signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't complain now. You can't back out now. <laughs> um, the question from Olivia on YouTube is, any chance to add a number percentage to see what the ultimate status is and see numbers uh, for hull, armor, and shield? Percentages in the upper left? or like, num like numbers being represented. I know that we had a conversation, there was a UI conversation. Oh gosh, this was a while back, goodness gravy. Um, I mean, <sighs> there are various settings to adjust like the numbers that show up, you know, damage number, XP numbers, HUD and cockpit, key bindings and cockpit, mouse, uh, well, that's not it. But like these first, these ones up here, like we have a lot of those little features to show you uh, like what's appearing on the screen. Cause internally we think there's already almost too much that's being shown on the UI at this time. Like this is actually why I have all this stuff disabled. <laughs> um, it's possible we could add other display toggles like that. I would not count that as something that's a priority at all. I wouldn't even count that as under the desired at all. That would fall under the nice to haves. And I just wanna be realistic on this front. I don't see it happening. So if that's something that you think is incredibly important to the game, for whatever reason, I do encourage you to make a post on the forums. We could see how many other people feel that that's a necessity to have that level of information. So, yeah. Lamondo. Right, uh, Thunderflame on YouTube. Uh, are we getting any more legendaries until release? Uh, they're noticing a distinct lack of boosters. Mmm, yes. Yeah. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, we're not doing any more major updates, you know, for until full release. Like, full release is the next major update. Um, look, we're going to be able to show a couple of fun things between now and full release. I think it would be super amazing. I think most team members think it would be super amazing to give you, you know, a little bit of something else between now and full release, but we cannot guarantee that. I can't say right here, right now, oh, we'll have this little patch and give you more stuff to play around. I can't, I can't do that because we don't know. There are so many factors that come with even a small patch like that, which can change so much of what you already have from a level of testing. Because, for example, if we spend a bunch of work on, say, you know, a, a, whatever, a, leg, a legendary, right? We got this new legendary that shows up, whatever. And we're like, hey, guys, here's a new legendary. We push it in, right? And just some balancing changes, whatever. Now, all of a sudden, your game space and everything that's been bound to these changes is different. There's a change that occurred. It's not just that an item has entered the battle. It's that this item and all of its coupled components, whatever it does whatever ways it happens, now has created many unique new opportunities for you to experience 
that hasn't probably been properly tested. When you dive in through that early access format and you're like, oh, well, that's what early access is all about. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. The problem is, is that now we're gonna have to rectify any issues surrounding that. So by locking in even something as simple as like a little push, we have to go into, all right, well, we have to establish like the, the release date for this little patch. We have to establish the evaluation date from the community for this patch. We've got to plan on a hotfix if it's needed for this patch. Then we have to keep our added eyes on this new little thing that we've delivered. It starts to add up quickly. And that's all time away from the content that we're working for the 1.0 release itself. It's not so much a sacrifice we wanna make at this point in time. So I say very much where you guys need to take it with a grain of salt. We do sincerely, we would love to give you a little bit more stuff along the way. That's a big ask. And that could create a number of problems that would slow down the generation of content for 1.0. We have to be very careful if we were to go that direction. So, cool. Excellent, excellent. Uh, speaking with YouTube, Brian Brown would like to know, uh, is there a specific reason for suppressing drops from enemies four plus levels below when there is no level scaling anymore rather than just having enemies drop loot from their level? Uh, not really. I think the, the, the conversations that we've had internally is that we just wanted to have the players... Wait, I said not really. That's not, that's not the answer. The answer is, the reason why we're doing that is we want the players to stay closer to the level that they're at so that you are engaging more or less with the challenges of your progression. So what I mean by that is like if you're a level 11 and you're continuing to play in Cedo over and over and over again, we don't want you to continue building up the experience. We want you to go to Union. We want you to start doing the jobs in there. We want you to start doing the missions in there. We want you to start experiencing that new content you know, that's that's the intended game structure. So we don't want you to just hang out in Union and build yourself all the way up to level 25, which has been done by at least one player that I know of. It's possible to do by circumventing that particular system. However, that is not what we want to be any sense of normality when it comes to playing the game. So that is why there is that restriction of four levels or more they do not provide experience. They do not provide equipment if they are lower than you. If they are higher than you, however, well, there are still benefits. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Michael's just added a bit of uh, the answer hammer uh, with regards, no more updates until version one, since it had cost us two to four weeks to have proper in between uh, yeah. releases while being able to finish the game in the meantime. Yeah, and that's that's the that's the kind of like goings on that I was talking about. It like adds up so much. Like one little push changes four weeks of development process. Like that's yeah, we want to focus in on 1.0. So I appreciate that clarity, Michael. That's awesome. Also, he mentions that uh, the loot drops uh, whenever you're going back through, say like you're going through Cedo and you're still getting loot, it's not going to be valuable to you when you're four levels higher, right? So there's not a lot of fun in that. But even still. If you're scrapping all of that stuff that you're gaining, it's just like way too easy to start like superimposing your crafting ingredients into basically whatever you need it to be. And we don't really want, we don't like that. We, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like what we want the game to do. So yeah, cool. Cool, uh, a couple more questions and then you'll be able to fly on. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a rift next. Paul Finns uh, on YouTube just wants to know, uh, currently there is only one catalyst for armor's sensors, cargo holds, optimized. How likely is it to see more catalysts for these parts in 1.0? Well, that's going to be one of the items or multiple items on Hans Christian's list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, look, I, I've said it before and I'll, I'll say it again, you know, like, we do want to do more catalysts. Like we desire to add more of those into the game. Uh, just like we're going to be incorporating more legendaries. Uh, just like just like we have the desire to. Like, we, there's so much. There's so much that we want to bring to fruition, and we are in go mode to make it happen. We just got to see if it can happen at this point. We just have to see. I would say that on a level of um, 
chances for more catalysts, I'd say that's more likely than not, in fact. I would say that there's a pretty good chance, a pretty good chance that we will see more catalysts uh, by 1.0. So, um, but time will tell. Time will tell. Cool. Right. Uh, last question. Uh, this one from Brian Brown again. Uh, any chance we will get to see the spread stats listed on the weapons like in Everspace 1? It's hard to tell what the spread decreases, uh, what the spread decrease is from the catalyst. So much like the UI conversation um, mm. just out in space, there's already a lot of information here. And I know like I'm one of these players who loves every single little detail. And this has been something that I kind of I asked around internally as well. And it does come down to the um, accessibility factor the um, uh, the readability factor. Most players probably aren't gonna care about certain statistics. Spread is one of those statistics. And when I say they don't care about it, it's not that you don't care about it at all. It's more of like the stats that are far more important is gonna be like your fire rate, how quickly can you launch it shot after shot? What's your DPS? That's the most important. Your range, also incredibly important. We actually plugged that in to the most important stats uh, per community request, but also because we were like, yeah, that makes total sense. Energy capacity, consumption. Like these are the things that you must know in order for maximum opportunity of a weapon, especially when you're comparing it to others. Does that mean it won't show up in the future? I certainly hope not. I would like to see them personally but we have to make a stand at a certain point so that we're not going so freaking crazy with the ui where it's not accessible and where it's not readable so that is where we are at right now with this information i think it'd be great as a toggle personally but again that's a nice to have that's a nice to have. Ugh. Gosh, it makes me sad. You could probably tell that I really want this too. <laughs> but, uh, uh, all right. Next question. I'm starting to feel sad. <laughs> you, you can fly on, pilot. Fly on. Mm. Excellent. Okay, so we only have like 35 minutes left. I, I have to champion this rift. Dang it. I want to do this. It's going to be a Lunacy 400. Um, we are going to be using this incredibly obnoxious Gauss cannon. Uh, maybe not the best choice for the stream. I'm probably going to fix that next time because it's very loud. Uh, that's kind of my fault. Sorry about that. We also have this powerful executioner just in case things get really heated. We're using corrosion mines and cruise missiles, both of which can have a chance to give back a little bit of what we got. My stats are up here. You can take a quick look because I really want to get in. Um, and then sort of, you know, they're all level 25s across the board with nanobots damage limiter and energy shield to top things off i do have a legendary in my hold it's amazing for this particular build i love it so much but i want to do this without a legendary because i have like a personal vendetta against lunacy 400 now so here we go here we go serious business mode all right Actually, you know what? I want to be able to see as clearly as possible. The sunglasses are a great added effect, but like, here we go. Here we go. How did that not kill you? No! Oh, come on. Ouch! Woo! Progress is a little slow. All right. All right, okay, okay. Ah! 
No! Hold still! Get out of here. All right. No, thank you. No, thank you. was a big shot. Still okay? Oh, no, we're not. No, no. Wah, 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 wah. Ah, no, we're doing it. We're going right back in. No, no, I refuse. What the heck was that tomfoolery? Nah, -uh. I don't believe it. It was all an illusion. Wowzers. All right. All right. Nope, we're doing it again. Your screenshots can wait. <laughs> oh my gosh. What the heck? I am not okay with this. Round two. <laughs> gosh. I was practicing at 500 earlier this week. I completed it twice. Uh Oh, 400 will be easy. It'll just be a one-shot for the stream, the streamer thought. Oh my goodness. Uh All right. And make sure we keep our shields up this time. That's going to be the big uh, the big caveat to all of this. Okay. Okay. Get a little closer, please. Get a little closer. All right. Okay. All right. Block the shots, please. You're supposed to block the shot. The warm up. Woo, that was close. Okay. Nope, that's not good. That's not, ah, ah! What the heck was that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right, okay. Phase one complete. 
What the heck was that garbage? <laughs> wow, okay. All right. Stay out of line of the uh, freaking mines that those guys drop. Yikes. Random item overheated. Yikes, I do not like that. Corrosion fields, I think I can navigate this one. Oh, We're doing this, dang it. We're committed, we're going. Start. Uh, drown, die. Oh my God. Just in case. Oh, I'm so glad I used those consumables. That would have been awful. Be problematic. Ah, uh, where's your? Okay, good. I'm like, I'm weak. Can you see me leaning? Like, I'm getting into this, guys. Like, oh my gosh! You don't know how badly I want to do this live, so you know that I'm not some freaking scrub. Ah. <laughs> like I'm some freaking scrub. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. For the record, if you guys can't complete it at level freaking 400, that doesn't mean you're a scrub, by the way. Wow. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> All right, good, good, good. I really want you down. Thank you. Ah, I didn't get him. And the beefy target, you'll work just fine. All right. Ah, -hoo 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 -hoo. Oh, goodness. Get a hot in here. Whoa. Oh, where's that Weber drone? Where's that Weber drone? Where are you? Wow, I can't find him. Ouch! No, 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 no. Come on, shield. Come back. Nope. Don't don't want to deal with that. Okay. Woo! I do need to take him out, though. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> so many of these close call explosions. Oh, my gosh. Oh, problem numbers. My goodness! I'm like taking offense at this! Oh. <laughs> I didn't pop my device! Oh, that's all I need! I would have survived if I would have popped the freaking device! Uh, uh, but I missed it! Oh man, I that ah! Oh, that makes me so sour! But you know what? We designed these rifts to be challenging for you all, to put together 
your skills to the ultimate test of what Everspace 2 has to offer. And thus far, whew, thus far, we're pretty happy with where it's at as of right now. There will, of course, be more that comes to rips before anybody's asking, before anyone wonders about that. There will be more that is on the docket for the 1.0 uh, release that the Rift will receive uh, some things. So yeah, gosh, man. I almost want to try it again, but then we wouldn't have enough time for screenshots and I don't want to do that to you guys. You guys have some wonderful screenshots. I want to provide that opportunity so that you can see uh, what everyone else has been taking as well as answer some more questions. So I think what we're going to do right now, since we've got about 20-ish minutes left in the stream, we're going to go ahead and full transfer over to the screenshots. We will continue answering questions. So if they come up from time to time and where you're at, you go ahead and just throw it at me and uh, it'll be great. It'll be delightful. So one quick little break. I'll be right on back. Um, also, just a quick word from our sponsors. If you want to follow us and find out all the latest happenings, I mean, the streams, of course, are like one of the best places to go. Let's, let's be honest. I give some little secret tidbits here and there and everywhere. It's such a delight having you all here, but also join us over in the Discord. Join us on YouTube, on Twitter, on uh, Twitch, on Instagram. Uh, we we love to have you. We love being able to support you guys. We love being able to talk. Oh my gosh, it's all it's so it's such a delight being able to invest our time with you and hear what you have to say. Sincerely, it is such a wonderful thing. So if you have that desire, which I sincerely hope you do, then by all means jump on over. Let's have a good good time. All right. So here we are. This is our little screenshot segment where we showcase all the beautiful shots that have been collected over the course of, I think this one's two weeks of time, if I'm not mistaken. So we have uh, quite the number to go through. That's why we need 20 minutes to showcase these as well as answer some questions. So we are starting off with one from Highbarf who's highlighting Alex's new ship. Some of you guys didn't catch this, but yeah, he's flying this uh, almost like a hot rod styled plane vessel and uh we quite like it we had a lot of fun making this and uh looks like he's got a couple dings there though so uh might have to buff out those scratches but otherwise nice little shot from high barf we also had a new user join us uh somewhat recently uh i'm gonna mispronounce the name but it's not huey i think not way not uh n-h-a-t-h-u-y yeah whatever butchered that completely, but they started supplying some screenshots and having some chats in the Discord. It was quite nice. This one's just a pleasant little experience out of Cedo. Nothing crazy, just a long for their travels. Very beautiful. We're gonna transfer over to Parting Gift Yoloer, which I think is a hilarious username. Great use of the um, teleport, by the way. Parting Gift is a fantastic option. We'll sit on this screen while Geekbyte asks or transmits one of your asked questions. Here we go. Yes, we've got Bivage over on Twitch is asking, and I think this is kind of been answered previously, but are there plans to have the UI reflect things such as ship's firepower stat reflected in the equipped weapon DPS stats? There are not plans. I could see that being a nice to have, but I don't know. I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's gonna happen if I'm being realistic. Um, but uh, I think the biggest chance of something similar to this would be if we are able to incorporate a couple additional nice to haves, like, you know, a toggle in the menu that allows you to see an additional number here or there. That would be the closest thing to that. Um, but there's there's not any plans, like when you're changing the weapon, like the numbers that show up, there's not any plans to add more to that. Um, we added the range because it seemed to be a fairly popular request and we seem, it seemed pretty valuable as well. Um, but beyond that, that's really where we're stopping. Pretty sure. So good question, good question, but gotta be realistic on that front. Uh, we This shot though, by the way, I love these widescreen shots. There's a couple of you guys who end up submitting them, especially ones that are like, 
I feel like they're content worthy for the wiki because it's highlighting the location incredibly well with its detail, with its secrets. It's done, uh, it's, it's done in a way that is commendable and I dig that a lot. So following up, we've got another one from Parting Gift Yolower again. Uh, this one uh, still, this one's in Union. Both of these shots are in Union. Both of these shots are in Union. Um, at least I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh, I'm questioning. The star, the nebulas look like Union. It's Union, right guys? Anyway, I love the shot. Nice use of color. We've got that orange on one side. We've got the blue on the other. You've got this nice uh, space where you see so much and yet there's so dotted secrets, so many dotted secrets scattered about that you can't quite see. You know that something's gone down because that wreckage in the middle, uh, but uh, I really do like the use of color here. I think that I want to play I Spy with where the player ship is, <laughs> uh, but other than that, yeah, nice little solid shot. We're going to transition over to another one from High Barf, highlighting these drones. It's, <laughs> it's always nice. I, I always like your shots where you're highlighting something that doesn't normally get a lot of love, that doesn't get seen and detail very much. And this in particular, just being able to zoom in over there, that's nice. That's nice. Look, he even has a name. He even has a name or a designation as it is, but still. Great shot, highlighting both of them. They're just kind of like having a conversation, the proverbial water cooler probably, as the other happenings are going on here in the Kite Nebula. So good stuff. Let's get another question as we gaze at Sirloin's shot over in Drake. Well, we're right back over to YouTube for this one with Brian Brown. Uh, any chance we could get a perk or store that can refine resources to higher variant versions, i.e. turn five copper into one pure copper? You know, that's actually been a point of conversation that we've had. Um, and we brought up a reference to Everspace One, uh, the DLC specifically, because there was a site, an on-site GMB refinery, as it is aptly named, that you could go to and then swap out certain resources for others. Um, so this is something in the, the area of more of like would be nice to have and maybe even upwards to the level of desired. That is something that we think could be, uh, could be neat. But at the same time, I can't say that it's officially in the plans, right? That's just been a point of conversation. We have to, you know, hit the priorities first. So definitely noted, definitely something that we think could be interesting, could be fun, could be nice to have. Uh, in order to get to implementing that though, it does require a particular pathway to make sure that it's appropriate. So again, by no means am I saying it will happen, uh, but it is something that's been talked about and has received, uh, you know, positively and positivity internally at least. So good question. All right, so we've got these, uh, we got these bases over here in Drake. We've got these redeemer sites. You know, it's it's interesting looking at this particular shot because like I've seen, we, we had a couple of iterations of these <laughs> locations. And man, I, I just, I enjoy the angle that this shot was taken of because you're getting so much. You're even seeing a little bit of what's under the water here too which is a pleasant sort of twist on this. So it's not just a matter of, oh yeah, look at the bases and the ice. No, 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 there's there's a lot going on in this photo. There's a lot going on. We've got, you know, the player ship all the way over here. That's right. Blasting away over at this poor redeemer. He's going down that bomber. And it's almost like fireworks. <laughs> Delightful. I'm not really sure what that is. It looks like the remains of some sort of ship. But then so there's so much there's so many other little things that you could probably catch if you were uh, zipping on through this. It just, it makes me so happy. I love shots like that. So nice shots, Sirloin. I appreciate that. We've got this one from Rick Adber. These asteroids don't get enough love. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of them myself. And um, they just, they are so unique to the game. They're only in like, two locations or three locations it might it might just be two locations and it makes the it makes kite nebula stand out so much more because of that and each i mean you guys know that each system has you know unique assets used for certain asteroid uh combinations and stuff but uh i really do like these they're they're great they are very pleasant wanted to highlight that nice close-up shot of the ship engaging with all of these uh puzzles done in the area too so 
cool stuff. We're going to showcase this next one from Sirloin. This was a bug that was caught and fixed. It basically looks like an ancient is attacking the home base. Uh, yeah, you could get stuck inside of the home base. Like player ship's basically around the corner. So it's trying to pull you in, but you can't move. Whoops, it's fixed, but it's a clever shot. So kudos to you. Geekbyte, let's go have, uh, have another question as we cycle over to uh, Crispy Muffin's new ship that reminds us all of the classic Batmobile. <laughs> Excellent. Right. This one's just regarding the streams, actually. Um, oh. What are the holiday stream plans? Obviously, we've got the 23rd and the 30th, uh, kind of, is a Friday. Um, is it going to be uh, streams on those days? Or are we having a well-earned rest? That was from Flory, by the way, on Twitch. Yo, but ironically, Michael and I have not talked about this. Like, Michael and I have been flying by the seat of our pants. We recently, uh, we recently chatted about a couple of elements that I need to be uh, adjusting on for example, just to make sure that everything's in its proper place. And, um, you know, we, we continue to kind of like go through this process of figuring out what's priority, right? This, this is like the theme of the day. 1.0 home stretch, it's all about priorities. It's uh, making sure that everything's lining up accordingly. So, um, you know, Michael and I will probably have a chat about that, figure out what that's gonna look like specifically. Uh, but guys, just know that Michael does not run me into the ground. He's a, he's a good boss. And I'm not saying that because he's present in the stream. like. Uh, our team is very well taken care of. Uh, we do not push the crunch factor that you guys see a lot of in the gaming industry. We take our time where when we work, we work hard. And when we're done with work, we play hard. That's how we operate. So just keep that in mind. We'll give you the updates on, you know, what that holiday schedule looks like in time. So no biggie. I like that question though. It's a good question. We will let you know. But yeah, Spoot Night. Uh, Man, I feel like this is like Spoot Knight's ship at this point. He's he's used this so much. There's also an interceptor that he uses a lot of, uh, both of which are are phenomenal. And I love highlighting the, the shots that Spoot Knight does in particular because he does uh, a pretty nice job with that depth of field, just so you have that captured focus uh, on what is meant to be in the photo. Yeah, just, you know, general, general stuffs and things. We also have this one from Crispy Muffin, which I thought was just... That's nice. This is a this is a this is a desktop wallpaper background right here. Just nice, casual, chill, hanging out on an alien world with a lot of random life forms at your camp. You know, awesome, very quaint. It's also fun to see you know the updated biology. In fact, I think there's even I think this was changed even further now I think about it but regardless it's it's nice you get just enough of these details on the sides of the image especially if I get out of the way it has this beautiful amount of framing and then the middle is just calm it's very simplistic you see the planet off in the distance brings it together nice I also like how you have it look like the ship is just skimmed across the sand it's just sitting there waiting for you to get back in so clever clever use of this crispy muffin we're gonna look at this one from T3Cube, where he is just chilling. Ha! And we'll answer another question. If I had one to ask, I would. Oh however. my gosh, <laughs> okay. we're done with questions? Uh, Betty Frog we're has just asked, done. how was your week, Eric, anyway? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I, I appreciate that question. I really do wanna make sure that the time that we have here right now, you know, like we are, we, we are a very transparent development studio, guys. Like uh, most of you guys know that, but for any of you who don't know that, like we want to tell you as much as we possibly can, especially if you have like concerns, especially if you need insight as to what the game provides or what the vision kind of looks like. Like I'm here for you. That's why every time I start the streams, I tell you that I am your guide and your servant. Okay. I, I work for you. That's why I'm here. So if you have those questions, if you want me to uh, clarify information, especially ask away, okay? Obviously that does not mean to pry into information that you know that I can't pass off, but you know, if there's that healthy amount of discussion surrounding development, please, I am your servant. Allow me to serve you. This shot comes from T3Cube, as mentioned. We are taking out what I, I, I think these are actually coalition fighters. Um, am I right? Those aren't redeemers, are they? No, those are coalition. Those are totally coalition colors. Uh, T3 Coop, you're being bad. 
What in the world? Did you change sides? How dare you? I have to <coughs> contact a, a certain uh, user about this. But uh, it's great. It's a, it's a nice little shot. Uh, I like the juxtaposition of fire and flame and uh, frost and freeze. Very much like a frost burnish kind of way to approach this. So kudos to you. Kudos to you. Geekbyte, when you do get a question, please just ping me and I will uh, jump in. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. And they will, sir. Certainly will. Keep going. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. So we've got another shot that comes from Drive Live. And uh, yeah. This one I enjoy because of its simplicity, once again. Just cruising around the corner, nice use of the depth of field, full focus on the ship, and you'll note that those colors are very nicely contrasting against one another to help it pop even further. And when I say pop, you'll notice like the elements over here on the right side of the screen, you can compare it to my shirt, right? It's gray, it's not black. My shirt is black. You have the subtle coloration behind, but then the ship, is much more closer to a black itself, as well as the fact that you have this orange in conjunction with this cyan, this blue. Very nice element of contrast. It makes that ship almost feel like it's jumping out of the image. It's great, great, great use of uh, screenshotting, photography. <laughs> so uh, kudos to you, Drive Live. I, I dig it. We've got this one from Highbarf indicating just a sheer amount of chaos. This, this this is almost like a movie poster in, in my eyes. I love how there's just a tremendous amount of things happening, but yet it's incredibly focused at the same time. Explosions are cool too, right? Explosions are cool. Mmm. I think the added touch of the front shield generator um, brings this home for me too. Just because the color's not out of place either. I know some of you might be looking at it and be like, oh, but it doesn't match the ship. Actually it does because emissives and then bonus the thrusters, but you know, the thrusters are always blue. Um, but yeah, definitely matching there brings that home. So it's a great capture. That's, I feel like that's one of your best high barf. That's a really, that's a really nice shot. A lot of action feels good. Very much feels good. All right, next one we've got is from Kazaa. Mm. I just want to sit and just... Mm. I love how, it, even though it's not centered, I love how we have this single green light as kind of like the the base of everything that resides in here, which is just, it indicates it's in turmoil. It looks like there's just a massive storm that's sweeping across this territory. And there kind of is, I mean, it's not untrue, but I love how deep the hues go here. Like this ship, that is, that is black. That is the blackest you can possibly make that ship. And so it sticks out like a sore thumb. And you have these colors, you have this gradation coming from the bottom all the way up, just enriched stormy sky, which is also very much black. Brings it all together using still this powerful single color of orange as these stand out qualities. I also like how the, uh, light and the gunship kind of match a little bit too. Feel, that's a feel good screenshot. I enjoy that very much. Nice shot, Kazar. We have a question. All right. What's the question? Uh, so Leon on Twitch wants to know, mm. uh, any chance we can colorize our own front shield generator? Mm, I love that question. So, uh, <sighs> mm -hmm. so, we're really happy we were able to change the colors through the modes. We're really happy with that. We, man, the aesthetics of additional effects like that, that gets into some particularly interesting territory on a level of giving it, handing it off for the player, right? Um, because to, at a certain level, 
we have to decide, do we want the players to have full control over what this looks like? Or do we have to have an intentionality behind the color that's chosen and associated with it? With the front shield generator, it's very much the latter. It's very much this color was chosen to represent reflection. This color was chosen to represent absorption. This color was chosen to represent movement. And those colors are, of course, blue, red, and white, respectively. And then an unmodded, unmoded front shield generator is that yellow color. We very much intended to do that. Aesthetic customization, if, if we were to approach something like that, that's so far down the line, but I, I don't think that's gonna happen. We, we do need certain elements to have an associated color bound to them. And we do feel like the front shield drainer is one of those things. But playership customization, you know, we are pretty happy with the selection of colors and you can do a lot with that. So, yeah. And Michael also says that it'd be a ton of work to add uh, uh, more tweaking to VFX. Um, and it's, it's, it's not gonna add, a, like, it's not adding to the gameplay experience. It's just, it's like, again, it's like that, it falls under that aesthetic detail. So yeah, it would be awesome, no doubt, but there's a lot of work behind that for not a lot of payoff, unfortunately. So, all right, so this shot comes from Kazaa once again, just highlighting the updated screens over at Kato Palace. Uh, I think this was updated in the, the latest version, probably. I don't recall it being there until recently, at least myself. <laughs> of course, I'm not flying over to Kato Palace all the time, so uh, I'm not sure, uh, but still, nice, nice screenshot. We got this next one from uh, Kazaa as well, definitely digging the look of his ship. This almost looks like it's an Okar ship. I had to do a double take whenever he submitted this screenshot. Legitimately thought, just for a very, it was a brief second. But I was like, wait, what Okar ship is that? And I was like, no, that's a gunship. What, it's clever. Clever use of the colors. Also like the Nordberg in the distance. Just that, added a little bit of a pop. I think it goes so far. So good, good stuff, Kazaa. I got a lot of Kazaas because there was, you know, we get pockets of, of screenshots and whatnot. Uh, but here's another one. Just the alignment of the gunship itself. You seem to change the colors of your gunship a lot. Wait, are those the same? Are those the same colors? Those are the same colors. Oh my gosh. Look at me trying to say something that's not true at all. Excellent. But uh, there's a really solid alignment that's happening here. It's a dynamic angle. We've got the planet that's kind of like uh, on this unique contour to help everything come together. And I also think this is closer to the time when this opens up. I think that's what that's from. Pretty sure we don't have random shooting stars in the background. I'll have to double check with the team if they snuck something like that in. But uh, yeah, neat. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, now we're moving into the next one. And I think some of these are starting to be since the, uh, yeah, these are since the update. So now we're moving into territory of like, since the update was dropped. This one's from Hair Kex, which I believe uh, is Mr. Kex. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a username. I just now noticed that. Why did I not notice that before? Love getting pulled into rifts. I think it's just a solid uh, screenshot opportunity. I feel like every single person who's done a rift has taken a screenshot of this. For good measure, it's awesome. I think it looks great. And uh, that is my chair, by the way, that squeak. Oh my gosh, I, I, gotta, I gotta fix that. That's, that's obnoxious. Um, but yeah, solid take on the entering of the rift. Good use of colors as well to capture that. So well done, air kicks. Bradley coming back for another round of screenshots who introduced himself with all of these uh, macro shots. And now he's kind of going for like the, like, more shots. <laughs> wow, that was specific and oh my gosh. Anyway, whatever. The point is he brings to life these environments and these particularly like the industrial side 
of Everspace 2 together incredibly well with his screenshots, whether it's the intricacies of a player ship and he highlights some sort of component or part uh, that's on the exterior, or when he's taking a shot like this, where you get this grandiose scale between these gas harvesters and these platforms that are probably doing some sort of mining operations and, you know, whatever. And because this one's like almost put into the clouds, like you can, this is entirely foregrounded, right? Like entirely foregrounded. This is entirely in the foreground. And all of this is in the background, giving you again, that great sense of scale of these massive structures that you're coming across inside of Everspace too. It's a very clean shot. We got another one from Kazaa here once again. He's supplied a lot. Oh my gosh, our time is up. I just looked at the clock. I just looked at the clock. Oh my goodness, we have too many screenshots. I chose too many. We're three minutes over. I'm surprised my wife hasn't knocked on the door and been like, dude. <laughs> Guys, I gotta go. That's the whole, I am so sorry. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll I'll just pull some of these screenshots over for next time. I was, I just, I love these screenshots so much. Um, I should have gave you a little bit more time. Shame on my rift run. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna beat myself up over that all next week. Dang it. But uh, otherwise, thank you guys sincerely for all the questions that you've had. It has truly, sincerely, it has been my pleasure to serve you along the way uh, through all things Everspace 2 related in our development. Yes, we're in the 1.0 home stretch. No, there's not gonna be a lot that we can show. However, there's gonna be a ton that we can still discuss and your feedback is still paramount through this process. So I hope that you'll be able to continue joining us along these streams as we continue down this pathway to that 1.0 and continue supplying your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions. Just also know that because it's a home stretch to 1.0, if you're submitting some sort of like new type of feature, it's not gonna happen. Just wanna put that out there. And otherwise, you've been awesome today. You've been fantastic today. And I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador. So don't stop being awesome. And we'll catch you next week with more details and fun galore. And dang it, if I don't, if I don't beat a freaking rift by then, I, uh, I pushed the button. Hey, come back, come back, come back. Okay, if I don't beat a rift by then, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be so upset. Oh, I'm gonna be so frustrated. Anyway, that's all we got. Is Corbin playing Everspace 2? I certainly hope he is, because I think that's where we're going to send the Twitch stream over towards. Uh, I already said all my stuff, so uh, uh, yeah. Toodles! Okay, okay, I'm gonna make this super quick. I'm gonna make this super quick. Cause I really, I really don't have a lot of time. So this is the, the, this is the after stream stuff. Uh, just real briefly, oh, pff, real briefly. Um, guys, did you know? <laughs> did you know that Everspace 2? <laughs> did you know that Everspace 2 right now is like going to go up in price in the future? Did you, did you know, did you know that's gonna do that at 1.0? It's the price is, it's gonna increase. So if you are incredibly persnickety when it comes to your finances, which I don't blame you, this society is pretty weird right now, huh? Wish list us. You will see the best possible price point when it shows up straight to your email. And you know that that's gonna be the best bang for your butt during early access. Even if it means you're gonna wait to play it till 1.0, you can get it more affordably right now. That being said, if you do buy it right now, your feedback is still incredibly important to help us iron out all these additional kinks and understand exactly where you're coming from and where you're meeting the game at because we got to make it feel right. We got to make it feel good. That's our goal. So if you want to help us along that pathway, awesome. If you just want to save a quick buck, we totally understand. That's how to do it. Wishlist us, watch for sales. Know that the 1.0 will increase in price. All right. That's all I got. Maybe we'll do some after stream shenanigans uh, with a little bit more time on our hands next week. Toodles for real. <laughs>